Hi, I'm Summer, a team member at the Legal Amity. In today's episode of the Insider Info series, I sat down with Simran, a future trainee at One for One Dickinson. So let's get into the video. For those of you who don't know, my name is Simran. Um, I'm a University of Bristol law graduate um, and a future trainee solicitor at One for One Dickinson. I'm starting my training contracts there in March 2021, so a couple of months to go. Um, my legal journey has been a bit wild. I've had stints at accountancy firms like, like EY doing a tax internship. Um, I've had three vacation schemes um, at PwC, Womble Bond Dickinson and Fox Williams. Um, I've converted my training contract offers, um, sorry, I've converted my vacation schemes um, from Womble Bond Dickinson and Fox Williams to training contract offers um, and also had a direct training contract um, offer from another firm called McDermott, Will & Emery. Um, I've also done three paralegal roles. Two of those were while I was applying. Um, so I did find paralegal work a lot like really beneficial for my applications um, and since then I've created Sims Legal Mentoring which is a platform that provides um, free advice and support for aspiring solicitors basically me sharing my journey and what I've learned personally from the process um, so I provide that on LinkedIn I provide advice on Instagram and on YouTube as well amazing and I'm sure that a number of our young aspiring solicitors are definitely following you on socials and if you haven't already definitely check sim out um so if we can crack on <laughs> <to> and... know. <laughs> <laughs> so sim why did you choose law <laughs> um yeah so i feel like my view on law right when i was younger it was very much that kind of glamorized view that everyone i think has everyone watched suits or a couple of films or tv shows and they're like wow i want to be a part of that um and i think when i was watching i think it was like this bollywood movie actually um about law it was like this bar barrister kind of providing his like legal argument and i just really liked how he spoke in such a structured manner and the fact that he was using things like legislation precedents like key facts to support his client and try and fight for his client i just really liked that aspect um and when i was at school i never really enjoyed mathematical subjects um <laughs> i see numbers on a page and my mind just drifts honestly I just can't do it um my dad literally asked me the other day what's 21 minus 5 and I, I just couldn't do it <laughs> it was so bad um so I've always done like essay based subjects I've always done well in them um, especially English literature and history um where you have to apply law or apply like legislation or literature um or facts to answer the question um so I always knew that I would kind of like do law and enjoy that aspect so I hate to be that person who says I always wanted to study law but I did um but I guess from that I never really knew what the role of a solicitor was about or how competitive that role would be. Um, so that's a lesson that I learned definitely later on in the process. But yeah, that's essentially why I chose law. I just liked that um, applying facts to a scenario kind of like sub subject. You know, you mentioned that you did vacation schemes with, you know, PwC and a number of other private you know, practice firms. What was your experience, you know, in comparison to from doing a vacation scheme at PwC to the private practice? Yeah, that's a really good question. So I know that the saturation of a legal market is a really common topic right now um, with the big four coming in um, <laughs> and essentially being such big competitors to private practice firms. Um, the biggest difference when I was um, at the vacation scheme at PwC compared to my other two firms, which are private practice, um, was my surroundings. Um, in private practice firms, you are pretty much surrounded by lawyers um, or you know, business support staff, HR, grad recruitment. Um, so it was a very much everyone had that some kind of legal interest or background. Um, whereas when I was working at PwC, I was there for three weeks. Um, my surroundings, I was sharing the office with people who are accountants, consultants, as well as lawyers. And I just found it really interesting that um, in law, people say, oh, the reason, one of the reasons why I want to be a commercial solicitor, for example, is because I want to provide tailored advice to clients. But consultants, um, accountants, they were all doing the similar thing as well, but just in their respective professions. And I just, I just really like that. I like that kind of social aspect as well. I'm, I feel like I'm quite a little bit of a social butterfly. So I liked going around like different desks and like kind of peeping over their work and looking at what they did. Um, obviously, I was there for three weeks. So I wanted to make the most of that experience as well. Um, this vacation scheme as well, in terms of length, was a lot longer than what I would expect um, and what you usually get at private practice firms. So at PwC, I was there for three weeks. So um, even at EY, when I was doing my non-legal internship with them, that was four weeks long. I don't know what it is with the big four, but they had really long um, internships. Whereas private practice, you know, sometimes they do it for only a week or two weeks. Um, 
I'm not sure now whether PwC have changed their structure up. Of course, I did my vacation scheme there like two years ago. That seems so long to say now, but they might have changed their system up. But for me, that was a big difference. Um, and you never realize like how drained you get on a vacation scheme as well. So three weeks of that was quite long. Um, I would say in terms of like task responsibilities were pretty much the same at, I, at both PwC and private practice. Um, I did mooting and advocacy tasks for both um, PwC and Fox Williams on my vacation scheme. I've also had to do things like group tasks. I've had to proofread documents. I've had to do legal research during those vacation schemes. So I wouldn't say there was much of a difference there. Um, but one difference I would say was in PwC had this new department at that time called New Law, which was dedicated towards providing um, you know, legal tech to clients. And I hadn't seen that any firms at that time, um, or I hadn't personally experienced that any other firm um, when I went to visit or had any other like networking event, for example. So I found it really interesting that the firm had a seat dedicated towards um, legal technology. Um, I'd like to also say, you know, sometimes, especially in the news right now, there is that perception that the big four appear to be a little bit ahead. I'm not sure this is just the impression that I'm getting in terms of they're getting a little bit ahead then private practice firms, as you can see from Deloitte and KPMG launching their SQE based training contract, um, very few private practice firms have done the same at the moment. Um, so, you know, I feel like the big four does try to paint them, paint themselves as ahead of the curve in that way. Um, and that's one way I witnessed that on the vacation scheme as well. Absolutely. So what were the skills that you gain while working as paralegal and how do these assist you in obtaining your training contract offer? Yeah, sure. So as I mentioned, I've done three paralegal roles. Um, the first one was in an insolvency team. Um, the second one was in a real estate team. And the third one was like a one month long project. Um, and it was in data protection, but it had links to employment law. So I guess it just goes to show from that, like you can get loads of wide ranging practice areas and experience with paralegal work, but also certain teams work together as well. So even though my, my last um, paralegal role, I was doing mainly document review which has got to do mainly with like data protection, but I was still linked to the employment law team. Um, typical tasks that I've done across um, all three of these experiences. Well, actually that last one was mainly to do a document review. I was analyzing 32,000 emails in three weeks, which was absolutely disgusting. Um, but it did really prepare me for like the common tasks that you could get as a trainee. Like best believe you will probably be getting document review at some point during your training contract. So. Um, having a vast number of files and documents given to me and giving the, given the task of actually analyzing it in a short space of time, I think it really did provide me that insider opinion or insider like, like perspective of one role that a trainee would be doing. Um, but with the other two, um, typical things that I've done is like drafting legal documents and wit um, letters. Um, so for example, letters to clients, letters to the court, um, drafting witness statements, um, proofreading leases, um, I've also had direct client communication. So especially during my insolvency role, they gave me so much responsibility um, with, you know, phoning up clients directly. I remember the first time the associate said, oh, can you call up um, so-and-so and just provide them an update on the case? And I was like, you what? <laughs> like, you want me to do what? I'm not calling her up. And then I, I had to low-key say to her, like, okay, can you like go over like what you want me to say? And she was, she really threw me on the deep end, which I'm really quite like happy about because it really pushed me out of my comfort zone. Um, but she was like, no, you, shouldn't, you should know what you're saying. And I was like, oh my God. So I actually had to, I fully wrote down like notes on what to say to this client on the phone. Um, but I really do cherish that opportunity that I was given. And then when I went to networking events with those same clients, they were like, oh yeah, I spoke to you on the phone. You're like, oh, you gave like really good feedback and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, that's fantastic. At least I did a great job. Um, and I think that's why being given extensive responsibilities um, is so important and being pushed out of your comfort zone. And I'm really happy that I had that experience when I was a paralegal. In terms of helping me um, with my training contract offers, I think it really helped um, with certain aspects of obviously giving me something to talk about on my applications. Um, when I've been asked um, it, like questions about my competencies or tell us about a time where you've done this or you worked under pressure, etc., I was able to learn from those experiences. But for those of you listening and you're, you may be struggling to gain paralegal experience, don't think that you only must have paralegal experience in order to show these skills you, you definitely don't need that i wouldn't say paralegal work is essential you can still show the same things um, from these competencies from transferable skills and non-legal experiences so please don't worry about that um, i would say my paralegal work though it did help me with like written exercises as well so when you're at assessment centers um, you may be given a kind of a written exercise or a proofreading exercise and 
having a familiarity with these documents and how to write letters beforehand really helped. Um, but again, you don't need paralegal experience to learn these skills. Um, you can learn letter writing even from a non-legal experience um, and from your own time as well, like via YouTube or just, you know, by like your own personal learning. Um, so everything that I've mentioned here, practically, you can like show in different ways from other jobs. So please don't feel like um, paralegaling is the only way. But I do think paralegal work, the main reason why I found it really important for me was it helped me, re helped me realize what kind of firms I wanted to go to and work train at. Um, and also confirmed to me that I wanted to pursue this route as a commercial um, solicitor. Um, because of the tasks that I was doing before then, I didn't think I had that passion or that engagement. So I am thankful that I did have those experiences. So, you know, as the founder of Sims Legal Mentoring, what are the three most common mistakes that you've seen when reviewing applications? And what are the top three tips then that you could give aspiring lawyers as they're going through the application cycle? Cool. So common mistakes that I usually see. Um, firstly, it's not going into specifics um, in your application. Um, so common things that I see are things like uh, I am the president of a society at university, which means that I have team working or leadership skills. And for me, I read that and I think, OK, well, how how exactly did you show team working or leadership skills when you have done your presidency um, and I think when you are reading your application it's really important to think of the why and the how questions every sentence you read um, because that's what really helped me in thinking about that more like, in, in terms of applying more detail sorry to your answer um, I used to read my sentences and if I in my head I was thinking okay and then I knew I'd not gone into enough detail um, so that's the main point I wanted to say about going into specifics in your application I actually provide personal anecdotes on how you've showcased a certain skill or a quality. Um, a common mistake I also see is people copying and pasting their applications and their sections. And honestly, you may be thinking, Sim, you're not even grad recruitment. Like, how can you see that? If I'm not even grad recruitment and I can spot when someone's copied and pasted an application, it's so bait because firstly, they've not even answered the question set. Um, they, the, the, what they've written is very, very general. Um, and it's something that actually, yeah, like I've said, doesn't answer the question set, but also doesn't show them off as a candidate. It doesn't show them off about why they've applied to the firm in the first place. Um, a common example I always give is three questions you could get asked. Um, why do you want to be a commercial lawyer as the first question for one application? And another application could say, why do you want to be a commercial lawyer at this firm? And someone may look at that and think, oh, those are the, like, they're, they're the same question. I might as well just copy and paste it, control C, control V, like I'm done. But that question, that second question has not been answered because that second question is also asking, is asking two things. Firstly, why you want to be a commercial lawyer, but secondly, why you want to be a commercial lawyer at that firm. Um, so, you know, it's very important to make sure you're not copying and pasting sections from applications. I would say it's okay to use similar experiences, same experiences, you know, I use, um, like the same experiences or examples for different questions but I made sure I rewrote them and molded them to the question that's been set and um, just so I ensured that I was still answering the question um, and another like common mistake I see is not putting enough emphasis on non-legal experiences um, so there may be questions like tell us about a time where you have shown resilience and someone will say oh i showed resilience during my time as a paralegal and for me i'm reading i'm like that's not genuine like why are you sharing all your examples from only legal experiences of course obviously it depends on how someone's worded it what example they've gone through but if you're able to think of a non-legal experience or a personal experience that actually answers the question better than your legal experiences then go with that and i think it doesn't place you at a significant disadvantage i think law firms actually want to see someone genuinely attempting to answer their questions not just putting everything in terms of the legal experience basket because it isn't like that in any way um so those are my three common mistakes that i see in terms of three top tips i would say this is more kind of like a positive mindset kind of thing i guess with my top tips because once i started adopting these that confidence then went with me throughout the application cycle so the first tip i would give is focus on your own journey um i know everyone loves compare well don't, they don't even love comparing it it's just an, an instinctive thing to do sometimes you see someone post something on linkedin you're like oh you know what i wish i wish i had a training contract offer etc and i think for me i always tell myself um social media is a massive facade instagram is all about fake flex LinkedIn is all about fake flex. You know, you don't see what people, um, the obstacles, the hardships that people have faced behind that screen. 
Um, and, you know, people might look at me and think, oh, you know what, she's got three training contract offers. Like, you know, she must have got this so easy. It wasn't easy. There was a lot of breakdowns. There was a lot of like feelings of loneliness, feelings of like, you know, is this even the right career for me? Loads of uncertainty. Um, and, you know, it was a process that made me realize like, look, this is one of the reasons why I've got to create Sims Legal Mentoring because this kind of mindset isn't on and this kind of like competitive, overly competitive com like nature isn't on. And I don't, I didn't want that. Um, so I would really say, you know, focus on your own legal journey. I always say, you know, you're not ahead or behind com compared to anyone else. You're literally right on time. And when you get that training contract, it's when it's right for you. Um, when I've had, when I was rejected from my PwC um, vacation scheme, I was so bitter for so long thinking, you know what, I could have got my training contract earlier. Um, but I realized a year later, that character build that I went through, that resilience that I built and, you know, the person that I am now is a lot more competent trainee solicitor than I was back then so because I've learned so many skills um, during that year. Um, so I am really thankful for that. Um, that goes on to my next tip really, you know, rejections help build resilience. Um, and, you know, I think, you know, every single future trainee or trainee or associate or partner has received at least one rejection. Um, I, even someone with like the, the most extensive family connections may have received a rejection from some point in their life. Um, be it from professional, maybe it might be like from a girl, I don't even know, but everyone gets rejections at some point in their life. Um, and I really do think it kind of helps build um, your resilience. Um, and like relating back to my last point, really, about my PwC vacation scheme, I look back at that rejection, I think, thank God that happened. Because at that point, I was just not the most mature person ever. I was so complacent, just by go barely going through life, doing the bare minimum and everything. And then I actually realized what hard work actually meant the point of that year after that rejection. Um, the next point I would say, the next tip I would say is go out of your way to find out more about the legal sector or specific firms. Um, this kind of like links back to my, I think I said this earlier, but taking on any opportunities that comes your way, should you have the capacity. I know a lot of people message me and they say, oh, I've been given this opportunity. It's voluntary or it's non-legal. I'm not sure, you know, whether I should do it or not. Um, and I always say, you know what, if you've got the capacity, if you've got a personal engagement in it, there's a reason why you've applied in the first place. You must be somewhat interested in what you've been provided. Um, then definitely like go for it and give it a shot um, because you never know how those non-legal experiences, those personal voluntary experiences can help you later on in your applications and in your interview as well. Even people who've worked in like non-legal offices, for example, like, I don't know, um, for accountancy or consultancy or whatever, and then they decide that they want to go into law. They have that same experience, for example, with um, diarising, keeping organised, um, familiarising yourself with a company's um, intranet or their system, knowing about things like confidentiality, like key things that you learn on the job. Um, so, you know, taking any opportunity that comes your way, um, obviously bearing in mind accessibility and, you know, capacity, um, it should, you know, definitely, like, you should definitely do that if you've got the opportunity to do anything new. But for those that haven't, which they would be very crazy not to, um, <laughs> I will be linking all of Sim's socials. So please do give her a follow, show her some love because you'll be getting some absolutely wonderful and insightful information and advice from her. So Sim, once again, thank you so much.